What is up, you guys? This is Mini Superheroes Today. Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be doing a comparison review, and the reason why is our set on the left here comes with two classic Jurassic Park characters and retails for $40, and the set on the right comes with two Jurassic World characters and retails for $30. So with only a $10 difference between the two sets, I really wanted to compare them and explore which one is better. So for example, if you're going to go to the store and only get one, is it better to save $10 and go with this set? Or is it better to spend the 10 extra dollars and get this set? By the end of the video, we'll answer just that. Now, the first thing I'll say about our Blue and Beta Velociraptor Capture $30 set is sometimes it's hard to review these sets before the movie comes out because we don't really have the full context for what's going on. With that being said, I'll try to be pretty fair here. And our first minifig we want to take a look at is Macy. So she's a really cool minifig. We'll zoom in on her here. She's got great torso printing, nice layers there. And the head is actually the same head that we got on Yelena Belova from uh, Black Widow. So that's pretty cool in its own right. Nice to see that head pop up somewhere else. And that's going to be our figure. Man, we can't keep that in focus, so I'm just going to hold it. How about that? Our next figure is Rain Delacorte, uh, a really unique figure with his little snake dinosaur looking tattoo there. I really wish he didn't have that tattoo because this head would be awesome for customs if it was a little bit more uniform, but the brown hair in a lighter brown shade is unique, and I really like the leg and torso printing. I don't really think of any customs off the top of my head that this would work for, but it is unique, and I'll say that. Uh, then we get our two dinosaurs, the smaller of which is Beta, which I'm assuming is like Blue's baby or something like that. I guess I don't really know off the top of my head, but it's just one solid piece. Nothing moves on it. And then we have Blue, who is looking kind of gray this time around. Uh, just like the previous Velociraptors, the head turns, you could open the mouth, you could move the arms, and you could move the legs. So it's a really nice uh, dino build, and that's quite cool. Going with our builds here, we also have this little log jump piece here. There was a city set a few years back that came with a very similar build to this. And uh, yeah, it's just got a little gray bike here that's nice. And speaking of city sets, this truck it would really fit well into city. My friend Maniac for Bricks shared at one point that I think Lego already did a truck almost identical to this, but off the top of my head, I don't really remember what that is. I really like the design of the bed. In some respects, I almost wished that it was a snot method and that you didn't see any studs here, but on the other hand, you know, you could put some stuff in the back of the truck if you needed to transport or haul, and that's pretty cool too. I really like the windows in the back. There are no doors, but you just lift the roof off and you could fit one minifigure inside. I wish that you could fit two, but regardless, I do really like this truck build. The last thing for us to look at here is this little trap here, which I guess you could have Beta like get into and then you trap the dino in there. I, again, it's kind of hard without the context of the movie to know like why this trap exists or what the point is, but Beta can fit right onto these studs right here, as we see on the box, and you could kind of close it up like that. So it's pretty simple, and I do think that it's worth $30, but I could see why some people might say it's a little bit boring with some reused designs and whatnot. Let's jump up $10 and take a look at the next set. All right, so jumping up $10 really changes things with the set here. We do get two dinosaurs, the Dilophosaurus, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Let's get it in focus here. Uh, the thing about these two dinosaurs is nothing moves on them. I mean, the end of the tail is kind of rubbery, but there are no poseable parts other than the mouth. This one's interesting because it does have colored teeth. The other one does not. But uh, it's a nice dino little piece there. And then we have the Pyroraptor. Where do they come up with these names? Anyways, we've got the Pyroraptor here. It's got some nice, like, kind of feathery spikes on the tail and everything. And just like the other dino, the mouth does open, but the teeth are not colored on this one. Both dinos do have studs, so you can put them on a Lego base plate if you had one. So that's pretty cool. We get a minifigure here that's just called Guard. She's pretty generic, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, let's see, try to get her in focus here. Man, can't win with the focus today. Anyways, it's a generic head, the Jin Erso head we've gotten a bazillion times in a bunch of different sets. Uh, pretty generic torso, too. Nothing to really write home about. Got a tranquilizer gun there. We have Ellie Sattler, who's really cool that we're getting her again, kind of in a 
older look here, but regardless, it's still a nice minifig. Got a scared face on one side, a gentle smile on the other, and she does come in the most expensive set of this wave, so it's nice to get her in one set that's cheaper. Uh, and then uh, we've got Mr. Uh, Jeff Goldblum. I actually met Jeff Goldblum a couple years ago, and I got to give him uh, one of the Ian Malcolm minifigures, and I met him again, and I gave him a Grandmaster figure, and he remembered me. Pretty crazy. I've told that story a couple times here on the channel, but uh, yeah, I got a picture with him and everything. Anyways, talking about the Ian Malcolm minifig here, uh, Jeff Goldblum and Ian Malcolm are basically the same person in my mind. He does have kind of this swooshed back receding gray hair there. Uh, he's got a scared face on this side. I love that facial expression. And then a smile on this side. And uh, yeah, not too much to say about the figure beyond that, but it is really nice. And this is the only Jurassic World Dominion set he comes in. So that's a nice addition too. Let's go ahead and move in closer to take a look at the vehicle here. All right, so here we have the vehicle, and you can see that there's a hitch in the back that we can remove the trailer from. I really like the wheels on there, and of course, we can take either one of the dinosaurs and put them on these little studs and kind of like entrap them here for hauling purposes, I guess. Then that goes on there, and then you could kind of haul them across the island. So that's kind of unique in that respect, uh, but we'll take that trailer off just to get a closer look at everything. It's a Biosyn Genetics Jeep vehicle wrangler. Or I don't know what exactly kind of vehicle it is, but I do like that the doors open, and the thing I perhaps like the most is that you could fit two minifigures, one in the driver and one in the passenger seat. We've got mirrors on it, we've got a uh, tailgate that opens with a little satellite in the back. It's just a really, really awesome vehicle for play. I think back to when I was a kid, I would have loved to drive this around the backyard or through a sandbox or something. So there's definitely great play value with this set. We've got some accessories like, I guess, a fire hydrant and a little like staff zapper. I don't know what the word for that is, but it's a very nice build, but it is only really going to work in the context of the Jurassic World theme. You know, I don't really know if a truck like that is going to make sense driving down your Lego city quite the way that the other sets truck will mesh so well with your city. So I think if you're a Jurassic World fan and you love, you know, playing with this theme, this is definitely a good option. But if you're really more of a generic fan, uh, generic in the sense that you kind of like all Lego themes and you don't want to go all in on the Jurassic theme, probably the other set is the better choice. But let's zoom out so I can kind of highlight them both and give you my final thoughts. All right, guys, so that is both sets in a nutshell. Well, I really want to hear what you guys think. Do you think that it's worth spending the extra $10 or is it worth saving the $10 and going with the smaller set? Honestly, I'm still on the fence. I would tell you to buy both, but really, if you could only get one, I think that the $30 set is the better one to go with because I just think that it's a better compact build and it's going to fit in with your other Lego sets just a little bit better than the $40 set. But let me know what you guys think. Drop a comment down below and I'll see you guys on the next video. Well, you made it to the end of the video. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe and maybe check out one of my other videos listed here.